Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 15 Paul Bunyan's Last Exploits Part 2 Here it was also that he built his great sawmill. No one knows just why he became interested in owning a sawmill, for he was a man who was never content unless he was out of doors among the trees. Perhaps, though, he built it to be sure of a place where he could dispose of the logs his crews cut and then turned the actual management of it over to Johnny Inkslinger. Or perhaps he built it so as to have a place for testing out the bandsaw, which he invented at this time, and which to a great extent soon replaced the old-fashioned circular saw in the larger mills of the country. At any rate, Paul Bunyan built his sawmill in one of the Pacific Coast states, and a most wonderful mill it was. It was taller than the highest building of that or any other day, and the band saws in it ran from top to bottom, passing through several hundred floors in turn and sawing logs on every floor. So great was the capacity of this mill that it had to run only one day a week in order to saw up all the timber that could possibly be cut during the rest of the time. There was a little trouble with it at first, but that was soon fixed. The workmen who put the machinery together originally were rather ignorant of the intricate new contrivances that they were handling, and they put the whole mill together backwards. Then, when the power was turned on, the entire mill ran just the opposite of what it should have done, working up sawdust into boards and then back into the original logs, instead of starting out with the logs and ending up with boards and sawdust. Paul let it run this way for a while, until it had worked all the waste shavings and mountains of sawdust in that part of the country into good logs again, and then he tore it down and rebuilt it the right way. Needless to say, the sawmill worked perfectly after that. It became quite a hobby with Paul, and he equipped it with all kinds of doodads and gadgets and ding-faddles which he invented, until an inventory of its equipment would read like a Sears and Roebuck catalog. The only trouble which he had with it after that was with its smokestacks, which were so tall the clouds were always getting tangled around them. Finally, he had to equip the smokestacks with hinges and block-and-tackle machinery so that they could be lowered when any especially big clouds had to get by. The little ones didn't worry him any, as he had stationed men on the tops of the smokestacks, and these were able to push off the smaller clouds with the long poles they had. It was in the Northwest that Paul decided to make the work a little easier for the great blue ox, and so he bought several thousand yokes of ordinary oxen to assist Babe in pulling heavy loads over the mountains. The oxen didn't last long, however, on account of the miscalculation which someone made in yoking all the animals up together. Seeing that he had such enormous pulling power to do the work, Paul had fixed up an extra heavy load of logs which he intended to have his animals drag across several mountain ranges and on down to the ocean. When they had started out with the mighty babe in the lead, there was a long line of yoked oxen as far as the eye could see, stringing down the side of the mountain range and across the valley at its foot, and on ahead, toward where the next range blocked the way. 
Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.